Okay, so in this step, we're now going to start the actual process of migrating from AngularJS to modern Angular by doing something called dual booting. Now, as I said in the previous lecture, this involves loading both Angular and AngularJS at the same time and having them work together to run your application. So to begin with, let's open up our package JSON and you can see here we've got our dependencies for our AngularJS application. And in addition to this, we need to add our dependencies for our Angular application. So this is our, our AngularJS code and we need to add the packages for our Angular code. Now I'm just gonna copy and paste them in and you'll find these in the show notes and course uh, and the lecture descriptions for you to, to paste in yourself if you want to follow along. It's gonna paste them in like this. And a few things to know is we're including quite a lot of packages right now. And yes, for the for the period of time when you're dual booting, your eventual package size is gonna be rather large. But eventually when you get rid of AngularJS, it's gonna go back to quite small again. So right now at the time of creating this course, Angular is on version five. What I'm showing you right now should work just as fine if you're working with Angular 6 or 7 or 8 or 9. Well, hopefully it should work just as fine. And if it doesn't, then I will update this course. But right now it's on Angular 5. Now the trick when uh, adding the packages for Angular 5 is we use a caret. So if we just typed at 5.0.0, this would just install this version of Angular. If we add a caret at the start, this kind of hat symbol, then that will install whatever the latest version of 5 is. So if there's 6, it won't install 6, but whatever the latest version of 5 is, so 5 is 5.9.3 or something, it will install that. So currently, if we look at it carefully, hopefully it should show us. Yeah, the latest version of Angular is 5.1.2, and that is what it will install. Um, Tilda kind of does the same thing, but it does it from the, the minor version onwards, so it won't install anything over... Uh, the five will install any patched version as well. So this is kind of a nice quick way of making sure that you're always using the latest version of, of whatever major version of Angular that you want to use. So I've added those. The next step then is let's just open up the terminal. Let's clear, oh, clear. And I just want to run an npm install, make sure we've got everything installed. Okay, excellent, it's all installed. I've actually installed this all previously, which is why you're not seeing just a lot of log lines already. And the next thing we need to do, let me close this out. So the next thing we need to do is add something called a polyfills file. So let me go into my app directory, and there I'm gonna create a new file, I'm gonna call it polyfills. And again, I'm just gonna paste a bunch of files in. Now polyfills are essentially workarounds for features that might not be available in your browser at the current time. So this basically polyfills uh, various features of ES6 in your browser. Now, if you know that your browser, for instance, has some of these features, um, you, perhaps you only want to target modern browsers, then you could remove some of these, okay? But for now, just to make things clearer, let's just, just include all of them uh, there. Now, you'll always need to install, uh, also make sure you have the zones there as well. So that's, that's ng zone, which is used in Angular. Now, as well as adding the polyfills, let's, we need to include it somewhere. So let's include it in our main.ts. I want to import it here, import polyfills.ts. Excellent, let's end it with a semicolon. Let's make sure this works again. pm run build. Okay, excellent, everything's still working. It's important the polyfills and there are no issues so far. Okay, the next thing we need to do is basically we want to start booting up using AngularJS. Now, I don't know if you ever knew this actually, let me create some space here. But in AngularJS land, this little snippet of code in your HTML file, this is what triggered the booting of your application as an AngularJS application, this ng app tag here. So because we now want to boot A from within JavaScript, and B, we want to dual boot with Angular and AngularJS. We need to remove this tag from our HTML file. You have to remember to do that. I know it's something that's quite easy to forget, but you have to remember to do that. And then we go back into our main.ts, and in here, we're going to start booting up using some Angular code. Now, if you're used to Angular, then some of the stuff I'm going to show you should seem very familiar with just a small extra tweak 
at the end. If you're not used to Angular yet, then some of the stuff I'm going to show you is quite new. Again, go to my website, codecraft.tv, and I have my entire Angular course available for free for you to watch. Migrating to Angular is not going to make much sense to you unless you know Angular. And I have a completely free course which you can view uh, and watch. It's all got videos as well, which you can watch, which will get you up to speed on Angular. So again, if you don't know Angular, please go and learn Angular before you go uh, working on this step because I'm not going to cover any of that really in this course. So we now need to include some packages from Angular in our main.ts. This is the file in which we're going to do our booting up. So to support our booting, we need to include a couple of other packages. I'm just going to paste them in. So we're going to include ng modules. So if you're used to Angular, these are some of the very, very common modules you inst install all the time. So we've got ng module, we've got browser module because we're booting up in the browser. Then we've got something called the upgrade module, which is basically the module which we're going to use or help a module from the Angular package, which helps us in upgrading our application or migrating our application from AngularJS to Angular. And then we've got something called Platform Browser Dynamic, which actually bootstraps our application. Now, as with any Angular application, we need to bootstrap it with an ng module. So I'm just going to paste one in here. This is the basics of what we need. So we define an ng module. We define some imports with the browser module. And the most important one for us is the upgrade module. I've then created a basic class here. And the really key difference here, so if you're used to Angular, you're probably going to find this a little bit different. But if you're used to Angular, you, you probably haven't seen this before. Essentially, we need to override this ng do bootstrap function and make it do nothing. And the next thing we need to do is essentially hook into the bootstrap process. I'm going to again copy and paste some code in here. If you want, you can just, all this code is going to be available in the course notes and the lecture notes. So you can copy and paste in yourself. But I'll just explain what this is doing. So we use the platform browser dynamic function, which is what we're going to use to bootstrap our module, our app module. Typically, in an Angular application, uh, you would just leave that line there. But for uh, in dual bootstrap mode, what we need to do is something a little bit different. So we hook into the response with then. We grab something called the platform ref. I then get from the platform ref the upgrade module. Then I grab the upgrade object. I then call bootstrap on the object. I pass in our document, our doc, the, the whole body, the body tag from our document. And I'm then saying I want to bootstrap with CodeCraft. This is essentially equivalent to the ng app tag that we had in our index.html file. But what this is doing is Angular, the modern Angular is a thing that's launching when the application is first loaded. That then will load up AngularJS and it will then bootstrap the rest of the application with AngularJS. So we're now dual booting. So Angular, modern Angular, is then the main thing that's then going to load up AngularJS and then that's going to bootstrap our old AngularJS application. So a pretty exciting step in the process because we now are actually using modern Angular and Angular at the same time. So now let's just make sure this runs. So let's clear. Let's npm run build again. And it should complete, but then give us some errors or some warnings, I should say. Okay, here we go. So this is completed, but it's given us a couple of warnings. Now they're just warnings. You don't need to work, uh, you don't need to worry too much about them, but there is a quick and easy fix to fix these warnings. The actual details of this fix is found deep, deep, deep down in a GitHub issue here. So if I, I will have these again in the lecture notes. So if you want to uh, have, a, have a look exactly what's going on and why it's going on, you can look here. But for now, I'm just going to paste this into our Webpack config just to get rid of those warnings at the bottom there. So I'm going to go to the top. I need to import a couple of things or require a couple of things. I need to require the path package and also the Webpack package itself, which path is built in to Node and Webpack we've already installed. The next thing I need to do is I need to add a plugins property to our Webpack config here. I won't go into detail as to what this is doing. You can follow through those that issue that I pasted that I showed you just a second ago on GitHub if you want to really figure out what's going on. But just for now, just understand that to get rid of those warnings, you just have to add this into the plugins. Now, eventually, once we move to, to full modern Angular and using the Angular CLI, you won't need to use this uh, Webpack plugin in the future. But just, just for now, just to keep get us going, we're going to add this plugin. 
So now if I run npm run build again, it's all good, it's all built, and you can see those warnings have disappeared. So I should, yeah, I'm still running the server and I'm still running the API server and I'm still running the web server. So if I go back to the application and I refresh, it should be working. And the important thing here to see, if I go to inspect element and I look in console, you should see this log line here, bootstrapping in hybrid mode with Angular and AngularJS. And if I go back into the application and I go back into the main, let's have a look main, you can see here in this bootstrap module callback, that's where I'm adding this log line. So now you can be certain that it's running in dual booting mode because where this log line is being displayed in our console and the application still works exactly as normal because all we're seeing here, we're still looking at an Angular JS application. We're still playing around with an Angular JS application, but one that's been bootstrapped with Angular and the Angular has bootstrapped the Angular JS. So really exciting step in the first process. The first step in this entire process where we've actually started to use modern Angular.